Hey guys, it's Dr. Elowad from stepandrun.com and today we'll be continuing our section on immunology and what we'll be doing is having a brief look at uh, all of the separate cells of our immune system so we'll get straight into it and we'll start off with monocytes and monocytes of course are, are unique in their function in that they're able to give us our macrophages which go on to have very specialized sorts of roles depending on which area they end up in in the body um, and we'll, ha we'll further have a look at that we'll break it down when we have a look at macrophages a little bit more closely but for now we'll just have a look at monocytes themselves and where these mono monocytes come from what they look like and some of their other characteristics as well so let's remind ourselves uh, where the monocyte comes from and just in the same way that all of our blood cells from our red blood cells to our platelets to all of our immune cells our T cells, B cells they all come from our hematopoietic stem cell so when we talk about um, the monocytes what happens is our hematopoietic stem cell differentiates into our myeloid progenitor remember it can also differentiate into the lymphoid progenitor but for now we'll just look at the myeloid progenitor since we're looking at the monocytes so the hematopoietic stem cell to a myeloid progenitor then this myeloid progenitor goes on to differentiate to give us our granulocyte monocyte progenitor and as the name states this cell gives us our monocyte and this is the cell we'll be having a look at and this monocyte can either go on to give us our macrophages or it can give us our dendritic cells okay so let's have a little bit of a closer look at the monocyte itself ah here we go the monocyte this is what it looks like in a slide you can see it's surrounded by a bunch of RBCs there and there it is in the middle looking like a large cell with a distinct appearing nucleus you notice that it has a large very thick kidney horseshoe shape nucleus as they describe it so they might tell you um, this is what they might show you you should be able to recognize it straight away from its characteristic kidney sh kidney shape or horseshoe shape nucleus and it also has this frosted glass cytoplasm you can kind of see it there now remember your monocyte is part of your agranulocytes even though you can slightly see some but the reason why it's part of the agranulocytes is when we stain it with the right stain you cannot see the granules as clearly as you see the granules in our granulocytes so that's why the monocytes is part of our agranulocytes the cytoplasm is kind of clear and characteristically what they describe it as is the frosted glass cytoplasm okay so where do we find these monocytes well the monocyte it leaves the blood uh, it leaves the the bone marrow in a mature form and circulates in the blood it circulates in the blood for about one to three days up to a week it circulates in the blood at which point it usually moves into the tissue to give us our to give us our macrophages and our dendritic cells or it circulates and goes to the spleen where it stays in the spleen as a reservoir so an easy way to remember this is in the blood you have 50% of your monocytes in the spleen you have 50% of your monocytes staying there as a reservoir so if we need a lot of monocytes to come out or if there's uh, inflammation signals or an immune response that we need a lot of monocytes we need to need macrophages to go to a site of inflammation then they can quickly be pumped out into our blood system and reaching the site where they're required okay and the specific area where these monocytes remain in the spleen is the cords of Billroth okay this cords of Billroth is just a fancy name for the red pulp cords okay I'll be doing um, a video as well on the spleen uh, because it also it, it's one of the lymphoid organs that also has a lot of important function regarding our immune system so we'll be breaking down the spleen in detail but for now just remember that your monocytes stay as a reservoir in your cords of Billroth now these are uh, monocytes as you remember they're part of our innate immune system 
and on a white blood cell differential they should be from about 3 to 7 percent of all white blood cells and to add in an extra little point here is that when you have more monocytes in a common situation where you have an increased number of uh, monocytes would be uh, when you have infectious mononucleosis so you have a lot of monocytes in the blood and remember infectious nucleosis mononucleosis is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus so what they'll commonly ask you uh, on an exam situation is what type of cell would be increased or uh, what's the normal number of cells you have something along the lines of uh, uh, you know something like that and just remember that infectious mononucleosis to your monocytes that are increased and what's the function of our monocytes well they replenish resident macrophages we'll have a look at the difference between resident macrophages and inflammatory macrophages so they replenish resident macrophages and dendritic cells under normal states and in response to inflammation signals and these monocytes can move quickly to the sites of infection in the tissues and divide, divide and differentiate into macrophages and dendritic cells to elicit an immune response and this is actually quite rapid this ability to respond to these chemical signals and move to an area of where there's an infection or inflammation and then divide and differentiate and it actually happens within the space of about 8 to 12 hours okay and the surface marker that's commonly associated is CD14 and CD40 that's the one that goes with our monocytes and we'll also see later on that the same marker you'll find it as well in your macrophages okay so that's pretty much our monocytes briefly overviewed and in the next video we'll have a look at monocytes and then how they differentiate into macrophages and then we'll compare those macrophages to our monocytes and we'll have a closer look at what we mean by resident macrophages and what we what we mean by um, these mono, monocytes responding to inflammation signals the two pathways that they differentiate to give us are macrophages and then after that we'll also have a look at dendritic cells and the role that dendritic cells also play in our immune system okay so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video